Mr. Scott, what is Industry 4.0? Uh, Industry 4.0 is effectively the digitization, the use of Internet of Things in order to enhance the way that we manufacture products and how we take products to market. And how does it fit in with the pharmachem industry and um, you know its direction towards biologics? Yeah, well, as with any industry, the pharmachem industry is going to look at its methods of manufacture and the way that it's leveraging digitization, the advancements in, in IT and technology, etc. Um, one of the key things is to focus on building out capabilities in that space, making sure that um, we leverage the different digital opportunities that exist and try and drive um, to an efficient method of getting drug product into the patient. And what is changing? I mean, um, you know, we hear a lot about digital drugs and personalization now and biologics and, you know, getting more out of the proteins and all the, you know, yeah. specialized drugs. How, how do you think Industry 4.0 will lend itself to that uh, evolution of Pharmachem? Yeah, so it's, it's us as the patients that are changing. We are consumers. Um, and we are demanding a different service level. We demand, you know, the example is that we can order something on Amazon and have it delivered within hours. Whereas with our pharma product, we have to trek to a hospital, to a clinic, to a doctor, to a pharmacist. Um, and what do we want? We want something that's a service level that's more in line with our standards of life now. Mm -hmm. What's that going to mean? Well, Industry 4.0 is potentially an enabler of that. It's the ability to tie together the different elements and strings within the industry to make sure that the product it reaches the patient quickly and services the patient need. How cognizant is the industry itself, the pharmacem industry, about Industry 4.0 and how active is it in embodying it? Yeah, great question, John. So, I mean, it's such a highly regulated industry for obvious reasons. We deal with personalised data, we deal with health, very individual to the, to the patient. Um, and one of the problems is always kind of navigating that regulatory environment and making sure that we don't expose the industry or the product or any of the big pharma core or even the smaller players um, in a negative way. So from a, a cognizant perspective, there's several things that we can do, I think, to advance that. I think we're probably behind other industries. So media, for example, is a great example. Um, automotive, you know, another industry that's really embraced Industry 4.0. Um, but what the farmer industry needs to do is really to kind of take on the opportunities that digitization presents, map out their own journeys because they're very unique to the, each individual company and say, right, okay, that's a path I wish to follow. Digital moves so quickly that you can't plan three, four, five, six, seven years down the pipe. Mm. You need to think about kind of medium term and what's the path I'm going to use to, to leverage to service my patients more effectively. How, how do you see big data and analytics playing a role? Yeah, so big data is the driving force behind Industry 4.0 and it's the same in pharma and life sciences. Um, essentially, the, the harnessing of that, the leveraging of that is the key to making sure that we can service the patient. So, for example, making sure that they get the right drug product or it's personalised to them through personalised medicines, making sure it, inclusive of falsified medicines directive that we've got controls. So FMD is effectively making sure that counterfeit product doesn't enter the chain. Um, that level of regulation, that level of data integrity is essential. You know, the, some of the blockchain elements, some of the data security, cyber security initiatives, they're the key really to making sure that the farm and life sciences industry can service the patient in the way that they, they would like to. Um, I think going forward, we've, we've got to be novel with the, the methods that we use there. We've got to work with the regulators as well to try and get those methods over the line quickly. As I said earlier, if we slow that process down, digital will just move quickly and we'll be on to the next level of service provision. What kind of things do you think will happen with blockchain? So I think there's two key things, firstly in the supply chain environment and secondly in terms of personal data. I think you touched on it there. The method, we own our personal data ultimately and one of the biggest things we're struggling with is how we share that through a regulated environment. And for me going forward, we've got to find a way to select as and when we share certain sets of personal data. We need to be able to pick and choose. You can imagine the repercussions, you know, in, in the US in particular with, you know, um, uh, health insurance companies, etc. You could select which information is shared in order to give you a, a, a more enhanced experience in terms of your health system and how your health requirements are serviced, and that could potentially reduce your insurance premium. If I flip that into the supply chain, the way that we interact across any industry, but for pharma and life sciences, between the different elements of the supply chain, be that big pharma company, med device company, be that even pharmacist, the blockchain can really put some, some structure around that and ensure that as the product flows through, or as our patient experience, as we, as we flow through you know, the, the health cycle, um, we really do get the ultimate and best possible treatment programs.